the idea I think uh, starts in 2013. There were a group of first who were campaigning during the election. It's a campaign called the uh, Malaysian Spring, where we were planting small little flowers on roundabouts and in public road reserves and things like that. So after that whole campaign, which lasted for about a month, we got about a few thousand Malaysians involved. So we went to plant that same seed of hope here in this garden. So we, we went to TMB to apply. They said, uh, this land doesn't belong to them. We went to DBKL, went to land office. And after about four years, uh, we managed to secure their permission and we started. Come, I'll show you a very nice spot up here. This garden, the first thing they wanted to do was to plant vegetables to kind of uh, feed the underprivileged, the needy, so the homeless, the orphans, the people who stay in low-cost flats. When we plant vegetables, we don't use uh, pesticides. And then if you look at some of our vegetables here, there's very little insect attack on it because I think it's about respect of ecology, of the environment. Eating for Malaysian is a very big culture. So we're trying to promote a lot of like community eat out here. So the one of our volunteers built this pizza oven where we can cook a lot of food from bread to pizza to roasting of meat and stuff like that. One of the things that we're trying to educate young children is uh, how to grow their own food. And patty has been our staple food. It's a little demonstration plot that we do every three or four months to teach people how to plant uh, rice. We don't actually harvest it, we just leave, the, leave it to the birds. So the birds will come and eat out all these things. It's, it's where everybody come and dump their rubbish. To them it's rubbish, to us uh, it's fertilizer. So the whole neighborhood here in Bangsa, they are all the organic waste to us in the car park. We bring them in here, put them into this compost bin and after about six months, when it slowly goes down, what we get at the bottom are beautiful uh, organic uh, fertilizers. So these are extremely good for planting vegetables and of course we got two cows and recently they have given birth to another one, three cows. So their cow dung also makes very, very good fertilizers. So we got about 20 of these uh, filters here. And these filters has got a lot of microbes and also bacteria in it that cleans the water as it comes down. So it's like our gut. I want to show you this. Yeah. We have many experts helping us in this garden. So this is uh, Clifford who brought in this bee beehive. These are stingless bees. They are very, very friendly bees. Most stingless bees will bite. They don't sting. But this one doesn't even bite. And they produce amazing amount of fantastic honey in here. So what we do is, every three months, we'll lift up this roof and we use a syringe and we'll syringe out the honey. We don't collect a lot, so it mainly goes to volunteers. Okay. Do you love this big melon here, folksy folks? A lot of the children and the old people who come to visit this garden, some of them are on wheelchairs and some are a lot of old disabled people. We created this garden just to demonstrate to them all the vegetables that we're growing in there are out here too. So they can see like basil, uh, spearmint, chocolate mint, uh, Brazilian spinach. Uh, I talked about pollination just now, right? You can see them at work here. There's so many different types of uh, insects flying around this male flower here. And very slowly, they will come and visit this female flower down here. And that's how pollination works. And this will turn into a corn later. See the cheery sunflower? Come and follow me into this greenhouse. So one of the ways we generate income for the 
for the garden is by selling uh, animal feed like this. So kids can come and buy feed. They feed the rabbits, the fish, the chicken. There's another, another roosting, uh, <laughs> roosting guy here. Idea is about us all collectively make, uh, taking small actions, but making quite big changes. So as we are talking to now, there's another ten other communities like this been set up, at least, maybe more, uh, because they come, they see, they get inspired, they go back to the community. We give them uh, support, uh, info support as well as technical support, and they are starting up. So it's it's about that movement going to become a, quite a I think a big movement that will probably permeate the the country. Yeah. Yeah. It's about people coming together to help themselves, feed ourselves, educate ourselves, bring up a new generation of young kids which are a lot more environmentally sensitive, uh, etc, etc, like feed the poor, take care of others, whatever. So it's all those things that is all encompassed in a small little garden like this. So we get to use this space, uh, the poor gets to get fed, social enterprises get to use uh, uh, spaces like this. The whole neighbourhood can throw rubbish to us, they don't need to throw it into their rubbish bin and send it to the landfill and they will become methane gas. Yeah. It will affect climate change. Yeah. So, so those are the things that we are trying to, to kind of uh, open up people's uh, idea of how we can be a bit more creative uh, in the way we live our life in today's society. How to live with other species. Yeah, that's a very big important thing to me. That's why the animals are here. We get a lot of resistance from our animals in Kebun Kebun Bangsa because people say that you are not allowed to rear animals in the city, you're breaking the bylaws and things like that. So what I'm saying to them is that the bylaw needs to change to accommodate new urban land use like this. And as we speak, I think the, the new uh, urban farming guidelines are being prepared and I think it will be announced very, very soon in the next few weeks. So those are the things that we are also trying to change. Politician mindset, laws which are uh, arcade, yeah. uh, and to try to bring society up to a different level of sophistication. Now we cannot never be always third world. We must yeah. catch up, you know, to with other places like Amsterdam, Singapore, uh, Scandinavia, or whatever. So that's what we are trying to do.